Thank you, and I'm very pleased to be with you all here today. I'm going to focus on the issue of child soldiers and the recruitment and use of children uh, by, by ISIS. Is this right enough? A little bit like this. Okay. okay, so just in terms of firstly, under international law, the recruitment and use of children in hostilities is prohibited under international human rights law and international humanitarian law. This is also a war crime. Um, it's also a war crime under the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court. Just to be clear also, in terms of um, the standards that, that are applied by the United Nations in terms of the recruitment and use of children, we talk about recruitment and use of children as recruitment and use of any individual aged under 18. So even whilst the, the crime under the Rome Statute is under 15, and that is the standard under IHL, the standard used in, in the United Nations is under 18. And that's reflected in the optional protocol to the Convention on the Rights of the Child on the involvement of children in armed conflict. What we have seen in terms of trends is armed groups such as ISIL, using, who will use tactics of extreme violence, who have been committing abhorrent violations and abuses against children in, in situations of conflict. These include recruitment and use of children, but it's also very closely linked to the, um, to the violations of the abduction of children, and also other, um, rape and other forms of sexual violence against children. And these have been very much systematically used as, as tactics of warfare. Uh, in my presentation, I'm, I'm really going to hide a focus on, um, on Syria and Iraq, uh, where we have seen a growth in, in the violations and abuses uh, committed by ISIL. And what I'm going to draw upon is the information, the trends that we have seen um, collected by the United Nations through the monitoring and reporting mechanism. And this is the mechanism used to collect um, information on grave violations against children in armed conflict. And the six grave violations are the killing and maiming of children, the recruitment and use of children, rape and other forms of sexual violence against children, attacks on schools and hospitals, the abduction of children and denial of access, humanitarian access for children. So turning firstly to, to Syria, just I, I just want to give a, a snapshot of, of what we have documented. This is only just a snapshot and I'm sure that you've, you've also been quite aware of what, what the situation is uh, through, the, through the media and other documentation. But what we have seen is a documented massive and systematic recruitment and use of children by ISIL in Syria. And this is forcible recruitment, either through um, abduction, um, coercion, indoctrination, or sometimes the arrest or detention, deprivation of liberty of children who are then um, forcibly recruited. Um, what we've seen is the use of military training centres. There's uh, at least three in rural Aleppo, rural Raqqa, and Deir Zor, which are providing military training to children as young as 10. And there has been, in terms of the, the use of children, we've also seen the reported use of, of child executioners that has also been quite widely portrayed in, in social media, uh, in, in video footage, and also in the, the magazine published by, um, by ISIL itself. Um, and this is a really, it is something which is systematic. They, they talk about the use of the cubs of the caliphate. As, as the, as the child fighters. We've also seen an increased verification of the use of child foreign fighters. But this is particularly um, with the children of adult um, ISIL, ISIL fighters. And just to note also that in terms of some of the, the push factors, in terms of recruitment, we've seen that ISIL actually offers the salaries and benefits offered by ISIL to fighters, including child fighters, are reportedly higher than those offered by other armed groups in, in Syria. So this is, this is also an economic push factor. Mm. There's also the, the issue of the use of education for, um, for the purposes of indoctrination and, and recruitment of children. And recently there's been new rules of compulsory education um, established for both boys and girls, which are in fact a contributing factor to recruitment and use because of the type of education or the indoctrination that is provided in, um, in the areas controlled by, by ISIL. 
And I think that what I want to highlight is also the, it's the risks, also the related risks that face children as a result of their recruitment and use. For example, for example, because of the high number of children uh, recruited and used by ISIL in Syria, we've seen a significant increase in the numbers of cases verified, and that's just in the cases that we've been able to verify, of the children killed and maimed as a result of their association with ISIL and other armed groups. And it's because there's large numbers of children present who are present at the front line, um, who are either present because they're engaged in combat or potentially used as human shields. And then there's, there have been a significant number of children who've been killed in airstrikes that have been targeted in ISIL held areas. Um, so then maybe turning to Iraq. This is also an area where we've seen the systematic recruitment and use of children um, by ISIL. And with also the feature of the, the use of youth wings, so it's uh, specific sections of, of fighters which are just, which are just youth. Again, we've seen the use of children as suicide bombers and as executioners, which is featured widely in social media. And also, again, the forcible taking of children to military training centres in Iraq, so in Talafar, Mosul and southern Mosul, but also in, in Syria for the, the purposes of their, their training. We, just to say that this is the majority of the cases that we, we have come across are boys. But there are, have been some reports of recruitment of girls that came from Tikrit in, in 2014. Um, but these have not been able to be verified. But the, largely when we're talking about recruitment and use of children, it's, it's boys. So in terms of what the impacts are, there's the very specific impacts in terms of violations they suffer. But it's also that this, this leads to increased needs for children, displacement, which is also going to be covered, and what is the future for children in, in, uh, in countries, or in, particularly in areas which, which are controlled by, by ISIL? And I think what we, um, I want to just highlight first then in, in terms of some of the messages and then what, my, what are some of the needs. So we all recognize that combating the violations perpetrated by ISIL against children and against the civilian population are an important priority, this is a key priority. But we want to emphasize also that respect for international law must prevail in these efforts in order to protect children, other civilians, and civilian infrastructure. And in fact, the respect for human rights is a prerequisite for any effective response to prevent extreme violence. We've really seen that the military responses targeting ISIL and other groups perpetrating extreme violence have continued to raise challenges for, protection, for the protection of children. This is evidenced by the number of children killed in anti-ISIL airstrikes, also the destruction and damage of hospitals and schools which are serving children. So in this sense, we really need to reiterate the need to abide by international humanitarian law, particularly distinction and proportionality in the conduct of hostilities. And again, to reiterate that efforts to counter extreme violence and armed groups engaged in such violence must be carried out in full compliance with international humanitarian and human rights law. And to note that the failure to abide by these obligations only worsens the suffering of the civilian population and of children, but also can have the unintended consequence of creating or adding to actual or perceived grievances in the affected population. Um, and lastly, on the reintegration of children, just to highlight that when we're looking at the reintegration of children who've been formally associated with ISIL or other groups who are using extreme violence, that this is it is really important but also very challenging to, to look at the, their effect of reintegration into communities and into society. And the, the indoctrination aspect and also trauma from exposure to extreme violence and extreme violations can increase the complexity of reintegrating children into their communities. So I want to just highlight some areas in terms of what is needed, um, not just to respond to, the, to this phenomenon, but also to look at the preventive aspects. And I think that really looking at services for children, this is, 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 is extremely important, particularly education as a key service, which is, gives children hope, it gives them meaning, it also it reduces their potential or reduces their risk of, of being um, recruited and used. I think 
um, prevention also in terms of engagement with community and religious leaders, engagement with children, for example, um, in areas bordering Syria, there's, there's the UN, UN is being engaged in providing information sessions um, for children and for their caregivers on the risks of recruitment and use. So in terms of some sort of counter information which can counter some of the social media messages which are going out. And I think and also an important point in terms of prevention, which um, Shafran will no doubt speak more to, is also within communities looking at building more cohesive communities, um, reducing divisions within communities. Um, and I think that that's also important to, to not feed into um, some of the, those risks that can be exploited by groups um, like us.